Hi, everyone. I'm here today with Lingi and Nadia to talk about the latest Visro AI app. Nadia is a software engineer and a Visro contributor who built this app. And Lingi is also a software engineer and Visro contributor who worked on the back end of Visro AI library. Uh, before we go into a few questions, a little bit more information about the app, I'd like uh, to hand it over to Nadia to show us a demo of this beautiful app. Nadia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Adam. Um, so, uh, hello, guys. First, let's start with um, going to the settings field and inputting our um, credentials. So here I will... Um, enter an API key. Uh, we can toggle it to see that if we, um, we uh, have the correct credential in the correct field. We can, um, I will then open a URL base, which is not, which is optional. So for individual uh, users, um, you don't have to, um, input your API base, it will default to the to the default one. Okay. Uh, but for um, enterprise users, you can enter your um, API base. We can choose our vendor, but let's go with OpenAI for our first example. So the second thing after um, inputting our credentials is we have to uh, upload the data that we are going to work uh, on. Um, let's start simple with a um, Gapminder uh, data set. After we upload the data, we can um, click to see the, the data sample of the uploaded um, data file. After that, we have to describe the chart that we uh, want to create. Um, let me... In so in this case, what we're doing, Nadia, is we're actually uh, telling the AI what we would like to see, um, and then and then it'll give us the results. Yes. So here we have to describe the chart as best as we can, uh, so that we can get the desired chart uh, output. Right. So um, yes. Here we decide uh, which model to use. We have. Uh, for uh, OpenAI, we support three models. So let's go for um, with GPT-40. Mm -hmm. And then we run Visro AI. And just as a reminder to our uh, viewers um, who are seeing this app and think it's going to be really cool to interact with, we are going to add the um, link to the app in the video description. So feel free to uh, click on the link and check it out. Yes. So here we have the, on the right side, we have the chart, the generated chart that we can hover over, we can explore. Um, also, this particular chart prompt uh, gave us the animation. Uh, so we can actually run the animation and um, to see the chart interactivity. On the left side, we have um, a code that is um, used to build this chart. It's a Plotly code, but we can toggle between the pure Plotly version of the code and the Visro code. As you can see, they're very similar. The, there are some minor differences about the um, capture decorator that we, you do have to import from the Visro uh, library. Very so, nice. After we generate this uh, really cool chart, um, we can then download. The, there is an option for downloading as a JSON or as an HTML. So if we download as HTML, we get the interactive HTML uh, file, which can oh, be then. Uh, just, just for our users, um, because we can only see Nadia uh, uh, this screen, uh, the Python file. Uh, the HTML is actually the HTML of the graph. So we, we, now you just downloaded it, you clicked yes. on it. Uh, you can't see it, but it's just opening in the graph itself in the browser. And then the JSON file is the data, right? The JSON file, yes, is the is the 
JSON uh, object uh, plotly actually. So uh, plotly uh, JSON of the figure okay. together with the data that is being used to create that chart. So, yeah. Cool. All right, so this example shows us um, uh, the example with OpenAI. Uh, when you click on the settings button, uh, you mentioned a few other AI um, platforms that we can use, right? Yes. So we have three vendors uh, that we support, OpenAI, Entropic, and Mistral. So let's maybe try Entropic. We do have to um, kind of insert um, keys for Entropic. Let me go get my Entropic API key. Now you the Entropic also have API base? Yes. Uh, yes. So, but as I said, you don't have to use it for individual users. You can just uh, enter your API key, and everything will uh, everything will work. So we have the Entropic. Let's just yeah, Entropic. Go there. Um, let's go with a different data set. So let's explore NBA. NBA data. Right. Yes. Uh, so let me quickly type in the um, prompt. And as you can see, I've asked for a Sankey diagram on this uh, in this particular prompt uh, because in my opinion, it suits um, the this data set the best. But uh, our more powerful models of both Entropic and OpenAI, they can, um, they already give you the best, um, the best uh, options, or... results. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, but still, if you want a, a particular chart type, you will have to be more explicit in your prompting. Um, for uh, in the in the visual AI, yeah. so let's uh, okay, let's go with the um, quad three. And what I want to ask, actually, now you're while this is loading, mm -hmm. actually, Lingi, is there what's the reasoning behind choosing those three um, AI platforms, OpenAI, Anthropic, and Mistral? Was there a reason not not to have other ones or specifically those? Yeah, good question. Um, we start with uh, the development uh, with OpenAI um, with very obvious reason because it's the leading vendor. And also then we also found, found out like, for example, the 4.0 works uh, really well. It behaves very intelligently, try to understand your intent, try to do the reasoning behind the same. And then we, uh, then we experiment with Nexist Anthropic uh, because they're uh, they are really good at uh, famous for coding, so that's uh, that's the reason we choose that okay. one. And for Mistral, I think they are powerful as well. They've been like one of the leading uh, vendors, and they also have open source versions. So that means uh, we can uh, eventually offering like more um, accessible uh, vendors to everyone. And but we are also expanding that. So uh, okay. in theory. In theory, um, uh, uh, in theory, like uh, because our tool, um, the the tool behind the scene, the with your AI, is um, a built on top of Langchain, Langgraph, mm -hmm. and as long as that vendor has the integration on uh, structured output, so that's the only one requirement. As long as uh, that happens, then in our backend library, it's already possible for user to choose their preferred window to work with the translation. Um, in the UI, we just showed three of them because that's what we work the most uh, okay. with. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, I see they show the Sankey diagram. Pretty cool. Yes. And it gives us the code and actually filters and, and does some data wrangling inside the, the function itself. Yes. So you don't have to worry about the data wrangling yourself. You just need to upload the data and uh, all the data wrangling and manipulations are done um, done for you. Uh, so. so in this case, for example, if I want to 
recreate this instead of an app just as a plotly graph i would click on that switch on the bottom and and click on plotly and then all i really have to do is just um import the csv if i did it locally on my computer import the cs file into like a pandas data frame and just activate this function yes nice yes that easy um cool yeah all right so we saw two examples uh, one with open ai and one with anthropic but in those two examples you actually told the ai what graphs you want because you're not yet i'm assuming you're like an expert data visualization person you, you know your stuff but what if I'm, I'm like a beginner and i'm not sure what what graph to create can we see like an example of that yes so as i said uh the more powerful models are more intelligent and they will have um a recommendation or they will use the best chart that they that they know of right okay. Okay. so um let's maybe show the example where i don't um but i don't specify the okay. um, the graph yes okay. so it will be a very um very minimal prompt let's say compare players heights by their position and this is we can still use the Claude uh, 3. And if we run it. This is also interesting, by the way. Uh, you will see the speed is much slower than 4 -0. Oh, comp uh, comparing Claude to 4 -0. OK, that's mm -hmm. a good point. Yes. All right, there we go. A box, a nice set of bo box plots. Yes. So it will still uh, choose um, suitable um, chart nice. type. I see that tallest people are naturally the guards and yeah. then the centers, I'm trying to get the rebounds and all. Very cool. Yeah, amazing how it, I mean, not only obviously thanks to your, your app, but seems like Claude is pretty powerful understanding what kind of graph to build without you even telling it. Just, I need to know, I have a data set, I need to know I'm interested in this column or in this part of the data, and it just, you know, gives you what it thinks is best, and it looks like it's performing pretty good. <laughs> cool. Nadia, thank you so much for the demo. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for for opportunity to present our um, our app. Of course, of course. I'm glad you, you showcased this. I do have a couple of questions um, before we end. One question for you, Lingi, is what, can you give us a little bit of context behind this app? Like, why did you choose to build this app specifically for the community? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think everything start with, um, start with visual, probably, like, to the very source. So I think one of our uh, idea of building visual is that we want to make the um, visualization, especially the dashboard building, mm -hmm. super accessible, right? Even if you don't have a uh, very advanced front end um, experience, we want to make it accessible. And then when the large language model comes out, we say, okay, how can we leverage that? Um, okay, then that's that's then the how the visual AI gets started. So we said, why why not leverage the power of the large language model and to help uh, to help the user to build better uh, visuals and faster, right? And then we kind of build the backend library we call with your AI. Uh, it's an extension uh, of this whole idea. And then we uh, we we have the, our prototype in the Jupyter notebook. We say, okay, cool. Uh, but how can we make it more even more accessible? <laughs> then we have this idea of UI, and yeah, and then you see Nadia build this super cool UI and to end. And now our now I can, we kind of realize that okay, actually it probably makes sense to make it basically now it's kind of accessible by non-technical user as well. Like yeah. as long as you have your data uh, and you have some question or requirements on your data. And we will try to give you the visualization, right? So, and that's how everything goes, like from the very beginning to yeah. what we're seeing right now. Yeah. It's cool how it started from a small idea and developed into a very powerful tool that from 
beginner data uh, data analysts to expert data analysts um, can use to better understand their their data uh, and trends. Um, thank you for creating this. Um, Nadia, what about one question for you is, can you share a little bit about your experience while building this app? Uh, as Lingi mentioned, uh, we had this amazing functionality in our core repo and using it in Jupyter Notebook was okay, but we wanted to enhance the user uh, experience. So we created this uh, app and it was so much fun and it was really satisfying and gratifying to, to, to work on it. Um, it was done uh, using Visro and Dash and I've learned a lot about, um, I've learned a lot about Dash, things that, di that I didn't know. I've learned a, a lot about Visro and how extensible it is. Um, so, and also, while I was working on, on, on the UI, it was like creative juices were just keep flowing and, yeah. oh, we could add uh, a data preview for our users so they can see the uploaded data. We can switch between Plotly and Visro. The ideas were just coming to us. And, um, and also, what if the user who, they just created this awesome chart and they want to save it, they want to use it somewhere in a presentation, oh, we can implement a download functionality where they can save their work. Um, so it was it was really fun coming uh, just to see this coming to 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 um, to life. To life. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. sharing your your experience. I'm sure the community is going to love it as well. Linky, you also mentioned when we talked a few minutes ago uh, before the video that uh, there's a teaser that you wanted to share with everybody. Uh, yes. Uh, so I'm very excited to announce that we, in our latest release of the core, uh, the Wizard AI library. So check out our GitHub repo. There, uh, we now also provide the functionality to create uh, the dashboard. So what you see from the UI here is creating the Plotly charts. And now we're also like trying to extend this um, these features to make the dashboard. Um, it's there and try it out. And also we uh, would we'll, like to hear more feedback on that as well. Uh, yes, back to you, Adam. Thank you both uh, for showing us this awesome app. Uh, a reminder to all our viewers to check out the app using the link in the video description. Uh, and please provide feedback. This is something relatively new by the Visual team. And they'd love to hear any feedback. If you have any suggestions, if you encountered any bug, I didn't see any bugs, but if you do encounter one, if you have the, Git, the project's GitHub repository, which is going to be uh, also in the video description. So please open an issue there. Or if you don't use GitHub, you're like, what the heck is GitHub? Just, we're also gonna share Lingi, uh, Lingi's and um, Nadia's uh, LinkedIn um, uh, profile links in the description so you can contact them there and uh, chat with them if you have any question or any uh, feedback. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.